this is Privacy Notes. As a data subject, you have a right to know the location of your personal information. You should also be aware of the safeguards that are in place to protect your data from exploitation. Why is this coming up? Because from time to time, organizations and government agencies will transfer data between themselves or between servers. There are risks involved during the transfer process. These risks usually center around adequate protection of data while it is being transferred. Today on Privacy Notes, our experts from TaxTech will give us a better understanding of the risks involved during local or international transfer of data. This, however, comes after an introduction to the nature and business for transferring personal data. Welcome everyone, welcome to Privacy Notes, the podcast brought to you by Tax A Technologies Limited, Tax Tech in collaboration with the NDPR Academy. Remember that Tax Tech is your blog for all things data protection compliance, cybersecurity and software development services. Can you believe that we're already on episode 11 of Privacy Notes, the podcast? If you've been with us from the very beginning, thank you. We appreciate you. And if you just joined us for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are glad to have you. We discuss all things data protection compliance in Nigeria and globally on this podcast. Today, we are joined by OM, our data protection associate at TaxTech. Hi, OM. Welcome. Hi, Irina. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today on today's episode of Privacy Notes podcast. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. So today, we'll be discussing about the transfer of personal data and its implications we would be examining the conditions that must be met by an organization that wants to transfer the personal data both locally and internationally. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back with details. We are back. This is still Privacy Notes, the podcast brought to you by Tax Tech and the NDPR Academy. Remember, the NDPR Academy is your plug for all things data protection, compliance trainings, and certifications. So remember that we said we're going to be talking about the transfer of personal data and its implications. We've talked about personal data previously in many episodes on Privacy Notes, the podcast. But just to bring back to your memory what personal data is, when please just help us. Okay. Thank you, Rena. So basically, personal data is any information that can be used to identify you as a person, either alone or joining with any other information. So basically, personal data includes information such as your name, your address, your email address, your phone number, and any other information that can be used to identify you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the explanation. Um, so can you just briefly explain to us what conditions must be met before personal data can be transferred locally and then we'll go to internationally? Okay. Thank you, Rena. So for local transfers, right, those are transfers between organizations or companies that carry on their operations in Nigeria. One of the first conditions basically the company has to meet is that it has to inform the data subject that is actually going to be transferring the personal data it collects from them. So before even collecting the personal data from them, you have to let the data subjects know that you would be transferring this personal data. And one of the means or one of the methods that you can use to inform the data subject is by including this in your privacy policy. So on your website, you would include the fact that you'll be transferring this personal data to other organizations for processing. So on the last episode, I think we spoke about a health insurance company, right? Yes, yes. So if you would actually be transferring such personal data, you should let the data subjects know of those transfers in your privacy policy. Also, following that, you would also have to 
if possible, actually, can inform the data subject as well of the recipients of this personal data. So when you are transferring the personal data, you can also include the recipients of this personal data in your privacy policy. So, for instance, I said we spoke about the health insurance company on the last episode. That's true. So, yeah, you just um like maybe create a list or something of third-party recipients of personal data in your privacy policy. This is just to let the data subjects know who their personal data will be going to if they release it to you okay. as a data controller. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the next condition the data controller has to meet is that it has to obtain consent. So you've included the recipients of the personal data in your privacy policy. You've also included the fact that you will be transferring personal data to third party organizations. Now, on your website, you have to include a button actually that says I accept or OK. Once he clicks the I accept or OK button, it means that he accepts the terms and that conditions. terms and conditions of yeah. your privacy policy, okay. basically. And he accepts that his personal data can be transferred to a third party okay. organization. Right. Okay. So another condition that the data controller has to meet is that there must be an agreement between itself and the data administrator or the third party service provider is going to be transferring personal data to. The agreement basically will be stating what processing activities are going to be done on the personal data. We said on the last episode that the data controller is like the data administrator's boss. Yeah. So basically, the agreement will basically contain the terms mm-hmm. on which personal data can be processed. Okay. Um, the data administrator is not allowed to carry on any processing activity that is not allowed or not included in such agreements. Okay. Or if I may add, it's also necessary that both the data controller and data administrator should have security measures in place Mm -hmm. for the processing of personal data before the transfer is being done Mm -hmm. particularly the data administrator so the data controller should ensure that the data administrator has security measures in place to protect protect the the personal data data to be transferred Mm. one other condition this is just a recent practice that is being done by organizations so um Another condition, usually, this is not mandatory, but it's recommended, is that the data controller, before transferring personal data to a data administrator, should ensure that the data administrator is actually compliant with the provisions of the NDPR. Okay. So one of those compliance requirements is also the filing of the annual data protection audit reports with NIPTA. Yeah, basically, the data controller has to ensure that the administrator is compliant with the NDPR and any other relevant data protection legislation in force in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah that's basically, those are the conditions mm-hmm. for the transfer of personal data locally. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. That was so detailed. Um, so um, you just spoke about the conditions that must be met locally. Are the same conditions supposed to be met internationally? Um, no, the NDPR is actually explicit about the conditions that are to be met if a Nigerian organization, a Nigerian data controller is transferring personal data to a foreign country. So the NDPR actually provides for express conditions that should be met by a Nigeria data controller that wants to transfer personal data overseas to a foreign country, right? So the NDPR actually provides for an adequacy decision. An adequacy decision is basically a decision by NIDA in conjunction with the Attorney General of the Federation, which determines that the foreign country that the personal data is going to be transferred to has an adequate level of compliance with data protection regulations. Also, if I may mention, NIDA actually has a white list of countries which have been deemed and approved to be secure okay, or to sorry, be compliant just one with. Second, there. What's the white list? <laughs> Let's a know. list that is white. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So the white list is basically a list of countries that have adequate data protection, compliance, and security measures in place for the protection of personal data. Okay. Yeah. So like where can you get this list actually? Okay. You can visit the NDPR Academy website. That's on www.ndpracademy.ng. They have a list as released by NITA. You can also look at um the NITA website to um confirm or find out okay. the countries are on the white list. Okay. Okay. So, like I said, one of the conditions for the transfer is that the country must have an adequate level of data protection in place. This is going to be determined by NITA working with the Attorney General of the Federation. 
another condition for this transfer is that the country's legal system must actually have consideration to concepts such as the rule of law. Sorry, I'm about to go a bit legalistic. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the country's legal system must actually have considerations for the rule of law as well as fundamental human rights. Another condition for the transfer is that there must be a supervisory body or a regulatory body that regulates personal data in such country. You know the way Nigeria has NITA as a regulatory body for data protection. Mm-hmm. Such foreign country where the personal data is going to be transferred to must also have a regulatory body okay okay so those are some of the conditions for transfer of personal data to a foreign country okay so we'll take a short break and when we come back we'll discuss if there are exceptions to these conditions that um just mentioned We are back. This is Still Privacy Notes, the podcast brought to you by Tax Tech in collaboration with the NDPR Academy. So before we went, we were just talking about the conditions that must be met before personal data can be transferred locally and internationally. So now I want to talk about the exceptions. So we know that to every general rule, there's an exception. So um, are there exceptions to these conditions? <laughs> okay, that's actually a legal joke. Thanks, <laughs> Renda. <laughs> So, yeah, there are actually exceptions to the conditions for obtaining an adequacy decision from META or the Attorney General of the Federation. So one of the exceptions is if the data subject actually consents to or gives his consent to the transfer of personal data to the foreign country. However, a condition for this exception is that the data subject must actually explicitly and in details know the risks that will be involved in this transfer. So, for instance, if you as a Nigerian company wants to transfer personal data to a foreign country and the foreign country, to your knowledge, does not have an adequate level of security Mm -hmm. or protection of personal data, Mm -hmm. you should actually let the data subject know Yeah, Mm -hmm. in detail. You shouldn't leave out anything. You should let him know all the vulnerabilities and risks that will be involved in this transfer Mm. before collecting his consent. If the data subject, after knowing these risks, actually goes ahead to give his consent, Mm. this would be an exception and you can go ahead to transfer the personal data without getting the adequacy decision from NITA. Okay, so the next exception to the conditions for the adequacy decision is if the transfer of personal data to the foreign country is necessary for the performance of a contract by the data controller. So, for instance, you want to provide a service to a data controller or a data subject rather. And the only way for you to fulfill your part of the agreement with the data subject is if you transfer personal data to a foreign country. For instance, you have a third-party service provider who actually provides services but is not located in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That means you have to send the personal data outside Nigeria. Yeah. So in that instance, if the third-party service provider's services are necessary for the data controller itself to hold up its part of the agreement, Mm -hmm. then this will form an exception to the conditions to the conditions for collect yeah for an inadequacy decision okay yeah the next exception to the conditions for an inadequacy decision is if the transfer is necessary for important reasons of public interest that's um public safety public health um for instance i'll just use a scenario okay okay i'm going to use covid (laughs) (laughs) so we know about the whole global pandemic Mm -hmm. thing i think there's even a vaccine being created by Russia mm. currently, or I think it has been even been created. Yeah. Vaccine in quotes, because it hasn't been tested yet. Yeah. So there's been a lot of cases of COVID in Nigeria. So assuming there's a health company, for instance, in Nigeria that is trying to bring up or trying to develop a vaccine and wants to test the vaccines currently being developed by Russia. Yeah. Yeah. If he sends the names of a data subject, for instance, to Russia mm-hmm. in order to acquire the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion, I think that would count under this exception of public interest okay. because a vaccine is in the interest of the public. 
okay. and you are sending the names or the details of data subjects who have been affected by the COVID mm-hmm. virus to Russia in order to get the vaccine. So that is actually an exception to the so condition. What you're saying here is that the consent of the data subject does not really have to be necessarily gotten. Yeah. Because you are transferring the personal data in order to get a vaccine mm-hmm. to cure a pandemic, pandemic, yeah, which is in the interest of the public, if mm. you ask me, yeah. So mm. that's actually an exception. Okay, so those are some of the exceptions to the condition for transfer. That's in the event that an adequacy decision is not available to you as a data controller. Those are some of the exceptions under which you can transfer personal data to a foreign country. Those are not all the exceptions. If you want to know more, we have a training coming up on the 18th of September, the NDPR Academy Foundation course. We would be treating or discussing the conditions and the exceptions to the transfer of personal data to a foreign country in greater detail. Yes, that's true. And um, if you also want to learn more about um, personal data protection in Nigeria and globally, um, you can join our masterclass, which is coming up on September 25th and 26th. To learn more about this, about our trainings, log on to www.nparacademy.ng. And if you'd like to know more details and you're confused about any step, just send us an email at info at ng, and we'll be glad to take you through all these details. Okay, so we'll be expecting you at the next class where you can learn more in details about data protection compliance in Nigeria. Also, if there's been a breach to your personal data, remember that you can report this at www.rdb.ng www.rdb.ng Never let a data breach go unnoticed. So RDB is report data breach. That's the platform to report in breach to your personal data. Till next week, I'm Irina and... OM. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to yet another edition of Privacy Notes. On the next, we'll have a conversation about the do's and don'ts of data protection compliance.